Hello and welcome back to uh, Making Pong in Unreal Engine 4. Last time we got basically the essence of Pong set up and working, um, but we don't have any scoring set up for the game yet, so it just kind of goes on infinitely. Let's go ahead and set that up right now, and we're going to make it so that we can uh, win and lose the game. The way we're going to approach that is we're going to handle most of the functionality in the ball. Since the ball isn't being deleted, it's kind of almost like a permanent object. It is a permanent object in the level, so we'll put our functionality right on there. Go ahead and go to your uh, ball, PP ball object, where you've got most of the functionality for your other objects, and or, or for its collision. And we're going to go ahead and just expand off of uh, the end of this right here, where we've got our goal. So right now it's just resetting the ball to center. We want to actually make some changes to the uh, to the actual uh, score uh, outside of that. But right now we don't even have a score. So how do we set this up? First thing we do, make some variables. This is going to be player one score and player two score. Rather actually, let's not make it P1 and P2. That's kind of a not good descriptive name. So let's make it uh, L player score R player score. That'll just make it a little easier on us. I think that I think it will. Alright, we'll make these uh, public I don't think we need that, but we want to make these both integers so that they can only be whole numbers. And go ahead and just compile and save. And these should be both defaulted to zero. Looks good to me. So now what are we going to do? Every time the ball goes ahead and flies off to the side and hits a goal, somebody should get a point, right? So we're going to keep these separate from each other, but there's going to be some pretty similar functionality between the two of them. First thing we need to do is let's go ahead and say we hit the left goal. So we're hitting the left goal, that means that the right guy is getting a point. That, that just kind of follows logic. So let's go ahead and set the uh, right player score. And what's his score going to be? Well, it's going to be whatever he has already, plus one. Go ahead and get our player score plus one. Plug it right into there. So now every time uh, it hits that side, it gets, uh, you add another value to it. You add a 1. But we have to do the same for this side as well. So whenever there's a, uh, a goal, or somebody hits a goal on the right side, that means that the guy on the left side is the guy who hit it in there. So he should get a point for his, uh, his good work. So we'll make this left player score. And we're going to drag another value off here. Uh, actually, you can just hold uh, control and drag, and that'll create a, uh, a getter. This is a getter, this is a setter. Go ahead and drag off this and hit plus. Uh, and we'll add a 1 in here. And we'll plug that right into there. So now, this, isn't, this should not be right player, it should be left player, I'm sorry. Get. So now, whenever one person hits a goal in, that guy gets a point. If the person hits it in the other goal, that guy gets a point. And we could go ahead and see if this actually works. If we go into the main menu, hit save. Hit play, pause, and we can click on the ball, BP ball right here. And so you see you got these two values here for the left score and normal score. Let's see what happens. Oop, I missed it. You see it go up by a little bit? Might be hard to see on lower resolutions, but it turned to a 1. Let's see if I can get a point in on this guy. It may take too long, I might just give up. Let's see if I can get him. So he gets up there, hits down here. Flies up there. Incoming. I missed it. We adjust the speed of this paddle. Nope. He's getting a bunch of points in on me. But if I were to get a point on his side, you can take my word on that. Uh, I would get a point as well. Uh, before we go further, let's go ahead and fix that, actually. I'm just going to make it so that my paddle is a little faster, because I want to be able to defeat this guy. Let's make this 10 million. I want to get a point in on him, so let's click on BP ball, hit play. Actually, I'll click on it when we're in game. Oh yeah, that guy's done for on that. Oh, it's so close. It's obviously a lot of tweaking to do. Oh yeah, got him. So you can see now, one to one. There's one to one down there. You can you can jerry the difficulty of the game by controlling the speed of your paddle or his paddle or any of that kind of stuff. But this is just to show you how to make pong. Uh, you can tweak it how to your heart's content. So we've got our scores coming in. 
looks good, but in the game, this is what you're going to see. You're not going to see this when you're playing the game. There's nothing going on. It's zero, zero. So how do we change those text mesh objects, or I guess they're text render actors? Uh, how do we change those? How do we make it so that they're updating? Pretty straightforward. We want to go to our, uh, let's see, what do we want to go to? We want to go to our BP fall. That's right. And in here, after we set our score, we're going to go ahead and update that value. So, pretty simple. Much like the same way we got the this, we got the uh, we we got the actual uh, ball. Figured out where it was, the position. We're going to do the same thing, but on the uh, actual collision for the other one. So let's go back to this. And what we're, what are we going to do here? We're going to check, we're going to drag off here, and we're going to do get all actors of class. Just like we did before. And you may see a warning here that says, oh, uh, don't, uh, this is a slow operation, don't use it every frame. And that's true. This is, like I'm saying, this is a simple, simple uh, game, so it doesn't matter that much uh, to, to set it up this way. There's other ways you could you could set it up. But for, for the sake of argument, let's just, we'll just leave it as is. Anyway, uh, so we want to, what, what kind of class do we want to, we want to have actors of class. What are these objects here? These are text renders. So simple enough, we can just check and see. Check for text renders. So we'll do uh, text render actor. Sorry if that's in the way. I perhaps spelled that wrong. There it is. Okay. But just type in text render, and that comes up. That's what we're going to check for. We're going to look for those objects. And then inside our for each loop. plug in an array, because we're going to find two of them, right? We're going to find two of those objects, which is going to be interesting. We want to cast and make sure that all the functionality past this point is actually going to be based on the text render. Sorry. Turn off context sensitive. Text render actor. Like the other one, this just ensures that when we drag off of here, it's it's functionality that's based within the text render actor, ensuring that we're getting the right object. So what do we want to do? We want to see if this guy is the right one and if this is the right one. We want to we want to handle the functionality independently. One of the easy ways to do this is you can use something called tags. Tags are actually really useful. So if you scroll down in here, you see at the very bottom here, this little thing says tags, component tags, go ahead and hit plus on there and type in here something like uh, p1 score, or I'm sorry, uh, write player score tag. That looks good to me. And so what this is going to do is this is a tag. So we can check for this tag in the actual code and we can find this uh, object based on it. Go to this guy, go to tags, Left, left player score tag. It will go back to ball, and in here we can go. Okay, on the as a text render actor, this is going to be, you know, the the actual text render actor. What from here forward is going to be stuff pulling off of here is going to have uh, functionality based on that actual object. Let's see if it has a tag. Is it may have a tag? It should have a tag. Component has tag, basically like a question. And what tag does it does it have? Does it have a uh, that have that tag? Because remember, we only want to check for one of them. Since this is hitting the left goal, right, that means that the uh, right player is the guy who's getting the point. So we want to check for not the left player, but the right player score tag. We're going to get that, that, that guy over here, this one over here. Somebody hits it in the left goal, we want to get this, this point over here. Cool. So from this point, we just got to make an if statement. If it does have that tag, which is only one possible object that has that tag, then we want to actually set the text of it to something new. What will that be? It will be the actual score that we have right here. How do we do that? We'll go to true, and we'll go to set text, turn off context sensitive. Oh, I'm sorry, you can leave context sensitive on. But you want to drag off of the text render actor because this is, like I said, this is all the functionality pulling from that text render actor. 
pull off of that and do set text. So this red, th this adds text into the actual uh, text render actor, the equivalent of typing stuff in right here. Grab that guy, and if we do in fact have that tag, and that means it's the right object, then we want to set that value something. We want to set it 25, 34. No, we want to set it to the actual score. Go ahead and just drag off. I think this is the, yeah. Drag drag off the right player score. Then go ahead and plug it right into here. So you'll see this little thing pop up. This converts this, which is in fact a integer, into a name. A name is a special type. It's, it's essentially a string that uh, is used internally in Unreal Engine. And uh, this will just convert it. That way it works right in. So now, well, every time we hit one of the goals on the left side, sets the score on the right player, up one. And then it sets the text of this object to update to that actual correct score, which is exactly what we want. So let's see if that works. So this should be only when I hit it in on his side, which may be impossible <laughs> at the moment. Although actually, I think I, I did get it in last time, so let's see if I can, can outsmart my own creation, even though I didn't invent this idea. <laughs> All right, come on, and it's pretty good. Comes down. Need a little more speed on my paddle. And the sun was in my eyes. No, I don't know. Let's see. I want to get this in on his side. I could just, like, delete him or something. Let's make my paddle way fast. That way I can just get it in on him no matter what. Uh... about five. Oh yeah, that's gonna be hard to hit though. <laughs> Still doing good. So you see how robust this AI is, that's actually a good thing. Although, not for demonstration purposes. There we go, yeah, let's see you blocked that one. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you see, my score is actually updating, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. Now he caught that one. I'll hit one more in. You're not getting that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pong is a lot of fun. All right, anyway, so you see that my score is updating. That's what you want. Okay, so we've got our stuff set up here. Let's put our paddle back down to a more reasonable speed. About 1.5. We'll tweak that later on, but as you can see, I'm just trying to demonstrate some other stuff first. Okay, so on the ball, we got all this doing this stuff. It's updating our score. Looks great. Drag off all this. Copy it down one. Get all actors of class. Text render actor. That's right. Loop through each one. Make it sure it's a text render actor. See if it has a tag. This time, check for the left object. Uh, go ahead and get the uh, branch, see if it uh, actually is that object. And then if it is, set its text object to not the right player score, but in fact to the left player score. Looks good to me. Let's see what happens now. One on me, and he hits one on me. Oh, there you go. Score is updating, just as you would expect. So, there we go. We have a Pong running, and we have a score running on either side. That looks pretty good. So, I'm pretty happy with this from that point. Uh, we'll move on in the next tutorial, in the next uh, video. We're going to be adding the ability to win and lose in the game. And we'll set that up with uh, a little bit of functionality in the next one. So, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you like this, uh, feel free to leave me a like and uh, subscribe as well as comment, and if you uh, really support this channel, want to help support this channel, feel free to donate to uh, or support uh, fan, my fan funding that I have enabled for this channel. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.